Puebla, tener la visita del profesor Jakub Zahenskowski de la Universidad de Varsovia y director de la Facultad de Relaciones Internacionales de la Universidad de Varsovia. El doctor Jakub, en polaco, bueno, le decimos Cuba, <ríe> en minutivo, es un gran amigo y nos conocemos desde hace pues muchos años y el objetivo de su visita es eh, pues promover eh, la Universidad de Varsovia y el Instituto de Relaciones Internacionales de la Universidad de Varsovia. A través de la historia hemos tenido aproximadamente 45 alumnos de Relaciones Internacionales de la UAP que han estudiado en la Universidad de Varsovia y pues la mayoría de ellos eh, regresan muy contentos de haber estudiado en Polonia y en dicha universidad. Recientemente tuvimos a un alumno que hizo su tesis sobre la integración de Polonia en la Unión Europea y uh, pues nos gustaría eh, que ustedes se interesen en el área de eh, estudios europeos, eh, el doctor Crivelli, que le mando un saludo, y su servidor, somos los que impartimos ese curso, pero dentro de la Unión Europea pues tenemos, como ustedes saben, pues a 27 países y de los cuales pues tenemos una gran diferencia de países, ¿no? Desgraciadamente los países de Europa Central como Polonia, Hungría, República Checa, Eslovaquia son países poco conocidos en México, sin embargo son países muy interesantes que últimamente se han convertido en socios económicos eh, muy pero muy importantes para México. De hecho, si ustedes me lo permiten mencionar, estoy haciendo una investigación sobre el grupo de Vicegrado y México y me he llevado la sorpresa de que Hungría es ya nuestro octavo socio comercial y que el segundo, el mercado de exportación más grande para Polonia es México. Entonces, pues vean ustedes cómo van cambiando las cosas en relaciones internacionales. Y bueno, no me quiero ampliar tanto para dejar la palabra al doctor Jakub, eh, pero bueno, en Europa del Este, también ya Europa, Unión Europea, tenemos unas transformaciones impresionantes. En Lituania, Estonia y Letonia se han convertido en países eh, que están eh, catalogados como los números 10, 11, 12, 13 en mejor competitividad internacional. Eso hace 30 años era prácticamente imposible de pensar, porque estos países, pues como ustedes saben, pues eran periféricos de la ex Unión Soviética. ¿no? Entonces vean ustedes cómo va cambiando el mundo. El grupo de vicegrado es un grupo de países compuesto por República Checa, Eslovaquia, Polonia y Hungría y en la Unión Europea tiene un, un peso impresionante, estamos hablando de un peso prácticamente igual que Francia y este grupo de países actúa como bloque de países dentro de la Unión Europea y defiende sus intereses. Pero bueno, no les quiero quitar más el tiempo al doctor Yacouf, eh, pero nuevamente extenderles una invitación para que puedan hacer sus estudios de eh, licenciatura, una estancia de investigación en Polonia o bien irse de intercambio, desgraciadamente eh, a veces existe este miedo cultural, del choque cultural, el idioma, la cultura, pero créanme que estos países están preparadísimos para recibir a estudiantes extranjeros de todo el mundo y uh, hay una convivencia pues muy interesante de, con los alumnos extranjeros, tienen dormitorios para alumnos extranjeros, hay alumnos extranjeros de todas las partes del mundo, de Europa Occidental, de la India, de China, de África y bueno, eh, creo que sería pues una excelente oportunidad. Y nada más para finalizar, son países que comparten muchísimas cosas con México, son economías emergentes, están al lado de grandes economías, en este caso para ellos Alemania y para nosotros Estados Unidos, y son economías que van creciendo cada vez más y que van tomando importancia cada vez más a nivel internacional. Bueno, pues es un honor para mí presentar al doctor Jakub, quien va a hablarnos sobre. Uh, could you tell us about your conference, the title? Yes. Okay. So uh, he's gonna, bueno, él va a empezar y muchísimas gracias. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor, for. Oh, I will 
I will use okay, this. Okay. Uh, um, good morning, good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Fredro, my, my friend, uh, to, to introduce uh, me. I'm uh, Jakub Zelenczkowski from University of Warsaw. Unfortunately, uh, it doesn't work. It doesn't work? Okay, so uh, I will. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, welcome once again. Unfortunately, I could not speak Spanish. Maybe, maybe when we start uh, a very close cooperation in a few years, uh, I will speak uh, <laughs> Spanish. So in a few years, maybe I will present uh, my um, paper, my presentation in Spanish. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, European Union uh, strategy uh, towards uh, China after, uh, after Russia invasion on Ukraine. Uh, why I'm going to talk about uh, this? Uh, today we have uh, 22nd February 23. In two days we will have uh, 24 February. And uh, 24 February, one year ago, uh, I think uh, the situation, um, not only in Central Europe, but uh, in, uh, in international order, has changed completely has changed completely. Uh, usually, when we talk about uh, war in Ukraine, uh, when we talk about Putin uh, behavior, uh, quite a lot of, uh, some of my colleagues uh, with non-European uh, Union countries, universities, thinks, oh, it's only connected with Central Europe and with Europe. Why we should be interested? It is a conflict, a war in Europe. No, it's not, it's not uh, true. It is, uh, uh, it is a war which had, which has and which will have a huge, a huge implications for all of us. And, uh, and in this context, in this context, uh, I want to discuss about uh, European Union uh, strategy uh, towards uh, China. And uh, uh, if you, mm, uh, my uh, main research question is why and uh, how Russia invasion of Ukraine did have impact on European strategy towards uh, China. And also some of you could uh, start to think, oh, why Polish professor talk about European Union, China, why we should be interested in Mexico about this? Why it is so important for Mexican young students to talk about this? So um, in, the, uh, in the end of presentation, I would like to, uh, I would like to underline and I would like to um, answer for this question, but of course also I'm going to I'm going, uh, uh, I'm waiting for your questions and I will be ver uh, very happy to answer. So my uh, uh, main questions today is why and how, but also in this context, uh, I put also two additional uh, questions. Uh, the first question is about uh, can we find a common interest uh, among European Union member states in the context of China. As you, as you know, uh, we are united uh, in uh, Europe. European Union uh, is, uh, is, uh, uh, is a very important actor, but also, but also you should, as a student of IR, remember that <coughs> European Union is still not a state because sometimes the expectation towards European Union is uh, too high. We must remember that especially when we talk about common foreign and security policy, it is still intergovernmental cooperation. It is because sometimes when we try to make assessment of European Union as a global player, sometimes I think it is expectations is uh, too high. And the second uh, additional question is how the war in Ukraine, how they impact, uh, how they impact on uh, relations between European Union, United States, and uh, the democratic uh, states uh, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Asia. Because as you know, uh, it was 
also a lot of differences between European Union and the United States in a lot of issues. And the one issue, one issue was a China factor, was a China factor. Because we could uh, say, we could uh, say that uh, before, before war in Ukraine, uh, we have the coupling of interest, the coupling of interest between uh, European Union and United States. Especially when we take into account the Donald Trump uh, pre um, presidency. Because, uh, but also before, uh, if we look at the uh, Obama, if you look at the goal in foreign policy, it was the same. They, for, uh, for United sta uh, States, Asia started to become number one. Why? Because it is a competition about global hegemony between uh, US and uh, China. So United States, when, uh, when uh, uh, started uh, to, to uh, uh, when, uh, uh, when um, have a policy towards China, they look in the context of, uh, in the context of global he he hegemony. For European Union, it was completely different interest because European Union, from one side, wanted to have good cooperation with United States, especially in the security, but what was the most important for European Union? Economic stability, economic growth, so uh, they wanted to have good cooperation uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, China. And it was something, uh, su such kind of thinking, okay, it is impossible in 21st century to have a real war in, uh, in uh, Europe. It's, it, it is impossible. Why? Because we have economic interdependence. So, uh, uh, for example, a lot of po politicians in Germany. Why, you know, why Putin will, would start war? good business with us, good business not only in Germany, in, with France, why? It is impossible according, if you, if you know IR theory, it is liberal approach. You know, it's let's great power politics, realism, no, it's, it's now if we have uh, economic interdependence, everything will be, uh, will be uh, okay. But situation has, uh, so that's why I put this uh, two, uh, two, two, two questions and I will try, uh, I will try to answer and um, if you could, uh, and uh, um, uh, what is my hypothesis? My, my, I will show you uh, now my answer if you could uh, change a uh, uh, slide. Um, uh, so I could, uh, uh, I could uh, uh, say um, it is quite long, you could, uh, uh, read, I will also send to professor so you will be able to see. But I could uh, say one thing in the context of Europe, China, uh, global order. I told uh, yesterday to one of the professor, um, Professor Jorge Schiavon, um, our friend from CIDE, I told that uh, uh, in the uh, uh, European Union, in Brussels, in the United States, in Washington, uh, the, the leaders of, uh, of European Union and, uh, uh, and uh, the leaders of European Union and the leaders of United States should, of course, uh, Putin should be prosecuted, but before they should give, uh, give him monuments in Brussels, in Washington. Why? Because Europe w was never such united, was never such united and Europe and the United States. And Europe and the United States, they were never such united. And who is the biggest uh, loser of this, the bi uh, of this uh, war, of uh, uh, Russia invasion or, on Ukraine? What do you think? Who is the biggest loser in international order? What do you think? Who is, yes, who is the biggest loser? Oh, tell, tell, what do you, what do you think, yes? Yes, 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 yes. Who? Um, Russia. 
Yeah, yes, half. It's yeah, it's one, and the, uh, it's the biggest loser of 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 this. And who else? What do you think? China, 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 uh, China also is the biggest loser. And Xi Jinping probably is very angry, very angry on uh, Putin. Why? Because before the war, before the war. China could play European Union member states. Uh, and also in the context of uh, Poland, in Poland it was, uh, it was a huge discussion uh, 10, uh, 12 years ago about uh, China, China uh, factor and a uh, uh, professor uh, who, who knows very well Poland, uh, who studied in Poland, who studied in University of Warsaw. I think you could uh, confirm 10, 12 years ago, it was a huge expectation that China would uh, give a lot of investment. And uh, in Central Europe, China was very, very active. We have uh, different uh, frameworks, 16 plus one initiative. And uh, it was, for both sides, it was a um, uh, very, very good solution because uh, China treats Central uh, Europe as a gate to Western uh, Europe and uh, uh, we expect in Central Europe that we would have uh, uh, more uh, uh, more investment. But, uh, but, uh, uh, but later more and more politicians in Central Europe started to see, okay, it is not only economics, it is not only business, uh, but China wanted to use uh, Central Europe, uh, to use uh, Western Europe, uh, of course, to, uh, to do, to make own interest, to make own mm, interest. But even, uh, you know, even before war in Ukraine, before, uh, it was a huge discussion, it was a huge discussion in Poland among decision makers uh, to support European Union strategy towards Indo-Pacific, or not, it was, I will show you in slides later. It was a big discussion and the United States supported, uh, encouraged Poland, let's, uh, let's uh, do what we do in Asia. Let's do the same. And in among the Polish government, it was not, they, we, Polish government was not so happy to support this idea of United States idea of Indo-Pacific order, why? Because what does it, why we should be interested in, in, uh, in Indo-Pacific order in Asia? It's quite far. It is no, it, oh, okay, South China Sea conflict, rule-based order, but doesn't care. Who cares in Poland about rule-based order uh, in the South China Sea? It is, it, is, it is no connection. We were in Central Europe, in Europe, we were interested in money from uh, from uh, from uh, china but also also the same for united states uh, american uh, politicians think now our main competitor is uh, china uh, it is in the context of global hegemony so rule based order uh, some values is important in south china sea why we should be interested so much in central europe we couldn't be here and here. That's why, that's why, uh, of course, as you know, the war started, uh, the Russian invasion, Russian invasion on Ukraine started 24 February 22. But the war started 2014. What happened in 2014? Russia uh, make, uh, made annexation of Crimea. And could you tell us if it was a uh, very strong uh, condemnation and the United States decided, no, we, we are not going to cooperate with uh, Russia? No. Uh, we have Olympic Games in 2014. We're in Sochi. And uh, so, the, uh, because for United States, United States, West Europe, uh, uh, but especially United States, West Europe, uh, European Union uh, uh, thought, okay, let's focus on 
business okay annexation oh it's united states fought okay it is not not a big issue for us china is the main competitor they couldn't see any any uh, any common uh, similar uh, any similarities and it was a big mistake it was a big mi uh, it was a big mistake why we should uh, put monuments uh, for putin because he now united europe european union understood one thing and also united states when we talk about rule based order some values it is not it is something which you could not divide okay say rule based order in south china sea oh it's one issue but we are not interested why we should think in central asia about this is uh, central europe and uh, the same people in uh, Mexico, in Latin America, in in uh, in uh, in uh, in, um, in, uh, in Asia, should understood food, but it's not all. We, if we take into account India case, you know, they should think that okay, if something happened, if we allow, if we allow now to break. Uh, international law but very very standard regulations that if you have a problem you could not use force but if you allow the for this so we come back to 19th century we come back to 18th century so you have a military power you have power so you could do everything so that's why that's why unite uh, european union uh, as i put european union uh, started to look at the per uh, to look at the china more in the context of uh, global order in the context of rule based order liberal order and uh, why it is so important because i will show you in the end the the evolution of european union approach towards china towards uh, asia but still in two let's say w one year ago and one month ago in january 22 when i had a meeting with some colleagues uh, and we discussed about european union strategy towards uh, indo-pacific because europe accepted uh, adapted a uh, new strategy towards asia towards indo-pacific in uh, in september 21 and a lot of a lot of colleagues told me, ah, it is very artificial documents. It's nothing. Why? Oh, it is rule-based order. Uh, what is that rule-based order? Values, common values. Uh, it is nothing, uh, nothing uh, concrete. And even if uh, European Union put in this strategy, rule-based order, values, everybody thought in the context of South China Sea. And it was some kind of like, abstract uh, thinking oh we put this but it doesn't touch us it is not it is not uh, it is not mm, uh, it is not mm, our uh, issue but after uh, 24 february um, uh, after 24 february uh, 22 uh, i think european union um, uh, understood one thing it is we could uh, we could not take it for granted um, uh, rule based order and values it is not for granted it is i always i always uh, tell uh, tell my students uh, i told uh, my uh, my colleague alexander who is a head of international cooperation that today the students especially in poland in our university uh, to um, ta uh, take for granted that they could go everywhere in Europe. It is Erasmus uh, program, you know, it is a uh, scholarship. And uh, for example, our faculty, we have almost 200, uh, 200 uh, agreements with European Union University. Each student go to us and we send him for six months. He received every month 600 euro and they take it for granted but 
when I had the first uh, trip abroad, I was eight and uh, it was 1986, so you could count how old I am. So I'm still young, mm, uh, of course. So uh, I, I, I took, uh, my parents took a car. It is East German car, Trabant. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's, uh, and uh, we, we went uh, to, uh, to Greece, to Greece. And 10 hours I need to spend on the border with Austria and 10 hours I needed to spend on the borders with, uh, with Greece. Why? Because I was from the East Bloc. Uh, uh, and now today we have now, okay, nice weather. We are tired. Let's, uh, oh, let's now in internet, let's book, let's buy ticket to Greece and uh, you could go to Athens from Warsaw in two hours. You could go in two hours uh, to Paris, no problem. So, and they couldn't, you know, they take it for granted. And I think the, the big mistake of, of Europe, of West, was that we take it for granted that nothing happened. Oh, it's, and they, we take it for granted values and the liberal order, liberal institutions. So now, in my opinion, uh, the situation has a change. Of course, not everything is perfect, but if you take into account one thing, if you, if you look uh, uh, what happened in Netherlands, what happened in Belgium, they decided to close Confucius Institute, Chinese Institute. Why? Because it was some uh, allegation that it is not uh, they, uh, China use this uh, Confucius Institute, uh, institutes and it is it, uh, for spying. It, uh, so, and uh, 10 years ago, it was almost impossible to, uh, how you could do this? It, w it would not be good for business. So um, in this uh, context, uh, as I put uh, here, I think uh, Rafa invasion against Ukraine caused that European Union began to redefine the role and position towards China uh, and the Asian continent. They started to look, to perceive this in holistic way. It is no decoupling interest between US, <coughs> transatlantic relations, uh, between, uh, between uh, um, uh, transatlantic relations and between European Union policy towards Asia, and between the European Union policy towards Asia and the United States policy towards the United States. Before war, it was some kind of, as I told you, it was some kind of decoupling uh, interest and that's why China could uh, play, uh, play games. And uh, China was very, very good in playing this uh, game. They spent a lot of money uh, for scholarships. They spend, for the case study of our university, every one day we, we had uh, emails, okay, delegation from this university, from this university, from this university. They wanted to set up a lot of Confucius Institute. And, uh, and uh, they were very, China was very successful. As I told you, uh, for Erasmus program, it, uh, uh, for students, European students, Union students, it's very important, as Professor could uh, confirm. Now, every student from European Union, from our university, could go for scholarship, could go for one semester, for one year, to another university, <laughs> the, and uh, he received uh, 600, uh, 600 uh, euro. But, for example, if our students from Poland decided to go to China to study, uh, to study in China, he re received 700 euro and he received also accommodation for free. So it is how China used uh, soft power instruments, uh, education to, uh, to attract um, uh, students, but also China wanted to be perceived as a 
uh, in a very positive, in very positive, in very positive uh, way. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, now we have quite a new situation. And if you could uh, show now the next slide, uh, and uh, I will, um, uh, I will uh, finish in a moment. Uh, as I said, we could identify in the last, uh, <coughs> in the last uh, uh, 12 uh, years four phases, uh, four phases uh, before 22 of evolution of European Union policy towards uh, China. I'm not going to go in details, uh, but the first uh, phase, as I said, in 2010-2013, Europe I could say European Union was blind. They don't treat China as a competitor. Let's make business with China. It is the best uh, for, uh, for us. Later, between 2013, 2017, uh, more and more European Union politicians started uh, to understand that China could be a challenger because uh, what happened in 2013? China introduced Belt and Road Initiative. China, uh, as uh, maybe some of you uh, know, China uh, till 2013 preferred low-profile strategy. No, not be so ex uh, not be so assertive. Let's make our own uh, uh, changes in, in in China. Let's not be so assertive outside. But in 2013. China has uh, become more and more uh, assertive. And later, 2018-12, uh, 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 step by step, European uh, Union understood that we need uh, to have a new policy towards uh, China. And uh, in next slide, in 2021, uh, European Union introduced a new policy. It was uh, European Union strategy towards Indo-Pacific. And this document, one year before war, was very, very important. And I put a new element. European Union started to think more in geopolitical terms than in economic terms. Tr uh, European Union started to underline this key word, rule-based order. But still, in, in the end of the 21, and at the beginning of 22, if you ask me, European Union has any idea how to implement this? It was not clear idea how to implement this. It was very important document, but only document. Why? Because still in the mind of uh, politicians was, okay, it takes some time. It, we have still uh, some time to think how to implement. The war in Ukraine speed up, facilitate this process because European Union understood the one thing. It is not only on the paper. Uh, it is this uh, rule-based uh, order is at risk, is in danger. It is, it is not only rhetoric, nice words we put in documents. And if we want, if we want to do something, we should, uh, to, to maintain liberal order, we should uh, do something. And that's why, um, that's why, in my opinion, the war in Ukraine uh, had a tremendous impact on European Union policy in, uh, outside, the, uh, outside the European Union. Because uh, they could uh, see that, okay, we should go beyond the economic uh, centric approach. But it was only in the documents because still, uh, if you see European Union and Germany, in 21, in the beginning of 22, Germany made good business with uh, Putin. So anyway, one war, one, uh, one additional comments. You told that the biggest, uh, and it's true, the biggest uh, loser is, uh, um, is, uh, is uh, Russia, is China, because China uh, didn't condemn uh, um, uh, Putin, Russia, and also, in my opinion, the biggest loser is German. Why? 
because how Germany behave in the last one year, and it's, you know, we, we need to proof Germany, let's stop this business with Russia. Let's uh, support Ukraine in, in the army. But we need to proof. What does it mean? Nobody, nobody in next 50, 100 years next will not allow German to be a real leader in the European Union. Of course, we'll have money, we'll have business, but it will not be a real trust that German is ready to be a, be a real leader, political leader. You know, everybody will look, everybody will, uh, everybody will uh, look uh, in, the, in the United States. United States will be still guarantee of security in uh, Europe. And when we talk about European Union independent army, I don't, uh, I don't believe. After the war in Ukraine, it will be, okay, Europe, it will be a very important player, very important actor in IR, but, in U but the most important, the most important elements uh, uh, in the security of Europe, it will be the relations between Europe and the United States. Europe, it will be uh, Europe, uh, United States uh, will be main partners for, for Europe in the context of uh, security. So uh, next, uh, very quick, uh, because I think I have one minute more, two minutes, if you could uh, show next slide uh, very quickly. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, maybe, uh, uh, because one, one, more, uh, one more thing, uh, before, 22, before 22, as I said at the beginning, before 22, before the war uh, in the Ukraine, it was some kind of uh, competition between US, China, and European Union. Why European Union were afraid of one thing. European Union was afraid that in this competition between US and China, if the, if the competition will be very strong, uh, if it will be very strong polarization, it is not good for European Union. So that's why it was, as I said, the coupling of interest. But situation now has, uh, has uh, changed. And if you could uh, show the next uh, slide. Okay, if you could. <coughs> so I, uh, it is uh, to conclude, uh, to conclude it is, uh, you could uh, see uh, the, uh, the conclusion that I think uh, when we talk about uh, when we talk about uh, 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 aggression against uh, Ukraine, they, uh, why they uh, they had and they have uh, such a big impact on European Union uh, policy towards China? Because before the main before the war and uh, in the last ten years, which factor mo was uh, the most important in shaping European Union policy towards uh, China? Internal some lobbies, some business group in the German, in France. Okay, let's make business. Okay, let's maybe forget about human rights, rule-based order, it's, it's why we should care. But war in Ukraine, it was the best evidence that we have a real threat to liberal order. And who will lose, who, who will lose if we don't have liberal order, international liberal order, and also international liberal order, it's not liberalism. Because, you know, some, uh, some, uh, some uh, people uh, think it is the same. No, it is liberal order, it's the order based on international institutions, on the United Nations system, on, uh, on values, on norms, and not uh, something you know professors knows very well also it uh, mi standards minimum standards of course each state like we we are, we, are, we have different interest but we accept after second world war that we will not use force will not use a force uh, when we have uh, some uh, some uh, uh, problem but nobody nobody uh, think that it is a real threat uh, in Europe, in Central Europe. 
in that we will come back to conventional uh, and and uh, you know I, I it will be very strong what I, I I'm going to tell but I <laughs> also told uh, in in uh, to my colleagues in Mexico City I had a, a few months ago a discussion with one of the professors from Israel and he started to to say oh we need to understand Putin and I have uh, I had one question to him and he was later very angry on me. What is the difference between Holocaust and what happened in, in Ukraine? We have genocide in Ukraine, Bucha, a lot of places. And you could see, what is the difference? Because I couldn't see difference between Holocaust and, 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 and Ukraine. One, one more thing, if you look, because uh, if you look at the documents, come back uh, home, you could find in Google uh, the speech of Putin, the speech of Putin from July 21. What he said, it is nothing like Ukrainian nation. It is nothing like Ukrainian culture, identity. It is nothing like Ukrainian uh, language. The same Hitler. Hitler said no Jews, no Jewish culture, no Jewish history. No, is there any difference? No difference. Please look at this uh, speech from 21. But to all of us, we were blind. In the 38, it was Czechoslovakia. Oh, let's allow Hitler. Maybe he will not make the next step. It was 70, 80 years ago. And we, uh, we, we, we thought uh, uh, it, was, it was the same now. Nobody, oh, it's only speech. Nothing happened later. And the people, I think, and Europe, it is European Union, I think, we still have a lot of to do, but I think European Union started uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to, to see that rule-based order, we could not take it for, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for granted. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, of course, if you ask me a question, uh, what, I, what I'm thinking about China and the Taiwan, I don't believe, I don't believe that China will do this. Because it is, and it uh, will be my last sentence, it is a big difference between China and Russia. Why? Because uh, Moscow, Russia, in my opinion, before war, before war, we should not treat uh, Russia as a, a real power. Why? They have, they had only nuclear power and, uh, and the resources. But if you look at the economy, nothing. If you look at uh, the situation uh, in the uh, villages, nothing. Ch uh, Rafa was not a beneficiary of globalization. You know, of course, resources, yes, but they, they didn't do nothing. To, and China has a lot of interdependence with with West, with the United States, especially when China has uh, become a member of WTO. So China would uh, lose uh, a lot of, a lot. And uh, once again, China is very important player, but still not a, a superpower. If you look at the economy, you no, know, you go to, uh, if, I don't know if you visit Shanghai or Pe uh, Peking. Okay, Shanghai, Peking, 25th century uh, cities, you know. But if you go 50, 50. 20 kilometers out of Shanghai, out of uh, Beijing. It is 15th century situation in small villages. <coughs> so China is aware we need a still stable situation, we need a still peace, and uh, we, should, uh, we should maintain this, uh, this order. That's why, that's why China is angry because uh, China is uh, aware that thanks to, uh, because of Putin, Europe and the uh, West are more united than ever. Thank you very much.
Well, um, español, English, Spanish, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> okay. Bueno, pues muchísimas gracias al doctor uh, Jakub Sangloshiki por esta eh, muy interesante conferencia. Thanks so much for such an interesting conference. Um, uh, we, queremos agradecer a la doctora Adriana Letza, al doctor Cribelli, al, al doctor Eduardo, coordinador de Relaciones Internacionales, por haber organizado esta, esta conferencia y esta visita del doctor y de la doctora de la Universidad de Varsovia. Um, so we open some questions if someone of you would like to ask. Um, Dr. Yakov or Kuba, <laughs> uh, if you have some questions about um, this issue about the European Union strategy towards China after Russian invasion of Ukraine. Um, un tema bien interesante, sin duda alguna, ¿no? Esta guerra de Rusia con Ucrania, el, el juego o el rol de China en, esta, en este contexto. Y bueno, um, I would like to, to address what you told us about Russia, about how Russia is a superpower, but at the same time it's not a real superpower because Russia did not develop anything about, um, it's not more than nuclear weapons and everything that you explained to us. So that's very interesting, Dr. Kuba. Uh -huh. Thank you very much, uh, Pedro, for uh, for this uh, question. So uh, it's it's um, uh, uh, if we take into account today's situation in a gl uh, global situation, if you want to be a, 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 a uh, important player, important player in 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 IR, you should use not only military instruments. It is quite obvious you should use different instruments, soft power instruments, uh, economic instruments, cultural instruments, and uh, tech technology instruments. So now, for example, you are aware it is a big competition between United States and China in, in technology, cyber security. And in this context, Russia is very weak, is very weak. If we take into account, I told uh, the case study of China, very active in, uh, in a lot of scholarships, special programs. If you look at the United States, why United States is very strong in, in, in Korea, in Japan, because they have a lot of scholarship uh, programs. And, uh, and uh, in the case of uh, Russia, the biggest problem is that it is under underdeveloped uh, countries in a lot of, uh, in, in, in a lot of uh, uh, issues. Look at the uh, look uh, at, the, um, at the, if we look at the war, you know, they had uh, they had such a huge uh, uh, advantage, so many soldiers, and why they didn't achieve goals? Because because first of all, very uh, low tech, um, uh, it was the equipment, military equipment, very weak, underdeveloped, and next. Next uh, thing, we do, uh, I didn't tell about this corruption. Mm -hmm. A lot of money and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, corruption. So and it, uh, it uh, and uh, uh, of course uh, we have G7, but uh, 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 for United States, for Europe, before war ten years ago, when we have an uh, economic uh, crisis in 2008-2009. Do you, uh, did we look at, uh, at, um, at Moscow? No, everybody look at China, how China would, uh, uh, how China would uh, behave. So in this uh, sense, in this sense, uh, in this sense, uh, um, uh, Russia is very weak uh, power. It is power, it is power because they have nuclear um, power. And as you, uh, you could uh, see, they now use nuclear blackmail, and uh, they say, okay, but it is the evidence of uh, weak. If you use military uh, uh, force, what does it mean? Uh, if, you know, if somebody use military force, it is the best evidence that uh, um, he's very, very weak because he couldn't, use, uh, he couldn't use any instrument. And one more thing, because it is common opinion also in Poland about some close cooperation between uh, Moscow and Beijing. Of course, Beijing didn't 
condemn very officially Moscow. Now, but also um, uh, Beijing didn't want, as you see, support uh, Rafa. Uh, you know, they are going, it is, you know, of course, uh, Moscow expect, uh, expected that Beijing will be uh, much more engaged uh, and support uh, uh, Moscow. Why? Because it is different of interest, as I said, different of interest between, uh, between uh, China, uh, China and uh, and the uh, and, uh, Russia, uh, uh, because China is the biggest beneficiary of globalization. China wanted to make business, wanted to make money. And some of you after IR, you would uh, go in business. What For business, what is the most important? Stability, peace. If you don't have peace and stability, uh, it, uh, it's uh, difficult to make business. And one more thing, and uh, it is also connected with Poland and uh, with, uh, with, uh, with uh, China. If you take into account history, the relations between Moscow and uh, Beijing was not so good. Why? Because they had a problem with border. And it is, you know, it is some kind of distrust between Beijing and, uh, Beijing and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, Moscow. And uh, please take into account the history of IR. Probably you have a course, the history of IR, yes? They, they, you, you have uh, I, I, during the Cold War. During the Cold War, for example, it was two blocks, Soviet Union and India, and the second block was United States, Pakistan, and China. In the, in the 70s, in the, in the 70s, uh, why? You know, because uh, as you know, um, for many years it was uh, uh, no, no diplomatic relations between China and the United States because of Taiwan. But in 70s, in 79, the uh, United States started to have diplomatic relations of, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, China. One of the father of this idea, who was? Polish advisor of uh, President of United States, Zbigniew Brzeziński. How, wh why, why United States uh, wanted to have uh, uh, diplomatic cooperation uh, with, uh, with, uh, with China? To, okay, maybe we don't li like in life. Maybe I don't like you so much. <laughs> but <laughs> let's, let's make a deal and uh, together we'll fight with our enemy, biggest enemy, you know, it's, no, make alias. <laughs> so, uh, so, and uh, uh, during, uh, I was born in 78, but uh, when I talk with uh, my professors, with Professor Halivak, you, you know, um, you know him very well, he told that uh, during, uh, during par uh, parties in the 70s and in 80s, uh, you know, it was a lot of, you know, it, uh, it was a cold war, it was not so uh, good, but uh, you know, it was party, drinking, uh, young, uh, young uh, people li uh, likes uh, always, you know, uh, different drinking alcohol, and we, uh, we Poles made the toast for China, <laughs> because in the context of, because Soviet Union was a real threat, and uh, they, uh, they wanted that, uh, China could be this uh, element uh, which uh, help uh, to to stop and uh, uh, to stop uh, Soviet Union. So I don't uh, I and if uh, I don't believe and it is uh, it is uh, in a lot of publication uh, some people who are not expert on Asia uh, they made the very common mistake. It will be never never a real alliance uh, between. Uh, China and uh, and uh, and uh, and Russia between Beijing and Moscow. One more argument because it is connected also with the philosophy of China foreign policy. We don't accept. We don't uh, accept. Uh, um, you know, we don't want to go in alliances. It is like you know. It's oh, we could cooperate. We could have uh, different forms of cooperation, but never uh, to have a real alliance with uh, with. Anybody. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Kuba. <laughs> um.
Um, Tienen algunas preguntas. Uh, is there any questions of the students who would like to ask um, Dr. Yakuf? It was a very, a very good question. Thank you very much. Because I, 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 I I've had uh, also such uh, such opinion also from a lot of colleagues and the students from non-European Union countries. Or maybe it is conflict uh, between empires, hegemonic war between the United States, you know, U.S.-led order or or um, uh, half a China, uh, half a led order. But I don't agree with you. Because as I said, as I said, it's not a, about a conflict uh, between two empires. Of course, as I said, if we, it, it is, a, we have different, uh, each empire has different uh, interests. And of course, they could uh, use different, uh, different, uh, different uh, instruments. But if you talk about freedom, yes, freedom of states. So the main question is, for example, Poland and they wanted to be in such and such organization. Or uh, Ukraine wanted to be a member of European Union, wanted to be a member, maybe in future, member of NATO. Who should they decide about this? Yeah, question to you. Who should decide about the future of Ukraine? The people from Ukraine? Not exactly. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I, I fully, here I fully agree with you. So, no, so, 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 so that's why, that's why it's, uh, and now, uh, you know, uh, now uh, the, qu the second question to you. Okay, it is uh, people of Ukraine uh, uh, decided that we wanted to be in European Union, yes? No, people of Ukraine decided, okay, we want to be a member of European Union. People in Ukraine, a lot of people in Ukraine say we would like to be a member of NATO. And now Moscow said, no, it is impossible. If you want to be a member of European Union, if you want to be a member of NATO, we will kill you, all of you. <laughs> yes, because it, 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 now it has happened. How many people, how many people uh, were killed? You know, in Poland, is, it was all, uh, all three and a half million people refugees. Suddenly, from one day. From Ukraine. It's from Ukraine. So the question is, what we, you know, and uh, so where, I, because I couldn't see now, you know, the conflict, if you could, maybe you could explain me 
because I, you know, it's I don't have uh, any monopoly of uh, knowledge. You know, it's 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 it's, and I I fully uh, understand your point of view. But now, how, we, for example, how according to you, United States, European Union should behave? What? How? How European Union? and the United States, how they uh, uh, should behave. What the United States should do it now and the European Union. If you could give me advice, so I would be very happy, you know, it's, <laughs> you know, because, you know, one thing, you know, you could have uh, the development of your knowledge, development of IR studies is via discussion, debate. So maybe, you know, maybe, you know, I focus too much on one, one uh, my arguments evidence so i would be uh, interested to listen to your point of view so how united states and europe should behave now okay if we agree that ukraine people should uh, decide over ukraine and you're telling me that most people from ukraine wanted to be in the european union it would be logical that No, no, here I fully, I fully agree with you. Here I fully agree with you. So even, you know, even I, I will, I will tell you one more, I will tell you m uh, one more thing. Uh, 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 so, so professor is uh, very active. You are a member of uh, this Mexican, uh, Mexican uh, International Studies Association. You remember when Polish, uh, um, Polish uh, International Studies Association wanted to make a congress, you know, in 2017, you know, I, I came to the cong I came to the meeting of World International Studies Committee. We had a very good proposal, but we were not selected to make uh, the congress. Who made the congress in 2017? Taiwan because it was actually it was interest of united states so i fully agree with you but what we now in this situation should do it with uh, with moscow So as you see, you know, because we could have that, no, it's not, uh, you know, because each of us could have different opinion and, uh, and the discussion and thanks a lot for this question because it's very, very important and uh, to, to understand because I think it is, I think it is uh, in, in, in a such situation like, uh, like today, we must be very, very, uh, to be very responsible. It's not about uh, you know uh, and uh, and uh, uh, research uh, and uh, and uh, uh, sci uh, science should not be uh, politicized. It is we are not politicians. We are not a uh, politicians, but we should look and it is according to law. According to law, for example, if Poland 
wanted to be in a, in a, in a, in a, in a European uh, Union. If any state would like to be in the European Union or in NATO, that decision depends on state. You know, because for example, if Poland would uh, decide people would not like to be in the European Union, we, we don't need to be in the European Union. In, it is, as I said at the beginning, it is not state. European Union, it is not state. The same in, 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 the same in uh, uh, NATO. Of course, like in life, we have different interests or for United States, maybe it will be better for Russia not. But in 21st century, each state should, uh, should, uh, should uh, decide about itself. And I will tell even more that if uh, Europe and if West and if uh, United States would they be with, you know, very, 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 very pragmatic. I would say something what you could be surprised. It would be even in the interest of the West and the United States to, to have uh, such war. Right. So let's say we have money, we have equipment. So let's use force for United States. What is the what is the problem? We have money. So let's, today I look at the map of Mexico. Okay, this part of Mexico should be, belongs to United States. I have, I have such a dream. <laughs> this part, California, yes, California, nice beaches, everything. <laughs> yeah, we should prolong, we should be bigger. And uh, so if we accept, yeah. if we accept this, so if nobody do nothing against Putin, yeah. some crazy person in the United States in the future would say, okay, let's take Mexico, nobody do this. <laughs> I have power, yeah. I have military. Do we accept this? No. The same I told my colleagues in India. They say, oh, we should understand Putin. Well, for me, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Why? If we accept Putin behavior, so, China made the deal with United States. Xi Jinping will tell to Joe Biden, oh, I will not compete with you, but let's take whole Kashmir to, to Pakistan. China and the United States would use force to, to do what they want. So, in practice, to answer for your question, so such situation would be the perfect for uh, empires. Because, you know, what they would they want, they would do this. So in the interest of Mexico, in the interest of Poland, in the interest of small states is let's have minimum standards. In minimum standards. Of course, it is like in life, you know. It's, I don't believe that, uh, you know, if somebody would uh, tell me that everybody love me at the faculty, I don't believe. <laughs> in academia, I don't believe. Do you like everybody here in the room? <laughs> Do you have some enemies here? <laughs> <laughs> so it is, you know, it is, it is, you know, it is a state, I are, it is social science. We are in so it's it people you know you couldn't you know it's it's impossible that everybody would uh, love each other everybody would uh, like so we have different interests but you need to understand we that's why it, it was you know why we have uh, the Second World War so many people uh, died because it was great power politics I want this let's use force so after Second World War that people decided, a lot of states, okay, we have a lot of different interests. Sometimes I hate you, I hate this, I like only this, but let's make minimum, <laughs> minimum standards. Let's put in the uh, United Nations Charter, let's not use uh, uh, force. Okay, if we have conflict, sometimes, okay, you have we, so let's, we have, the, okay, and we have still a lot of conflicts as you see in the world, it's, I, I, we, but, but we, da, we don't have such invasion, such invasion 
uh, it is, you know, we only compare to to what was during the Second World War, during uh, what uh, what Hitler uh, do it. It is no no difference. So that's why you know. Uh, but it was very good because sometimes if you think only, you know, it it uh, I I don't want to convince anybody who is right or not. It's 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 not uh, in in scientific po point of view. It's uh, it's not uh, my interest. But it is the most important is to based on the uh, opinion on the evidence, a key word, evidence. So evidence is that Ukrainian people wanted to be a member of European Union. Even more, I will tell you, they wanted to be a member of European Union, but Ukraina, uh, Ukrainian people and the West, they took into con uh, consideration one thing, okay, we fully, we try before the war in 2015-16, West start try to understand uh, uh, Moscow, and it, in my opinion, it was a mistake. But they try to think like in the way you you try to say, okay, empires. Half I said, oh, it is our sphere of influence, Central Central Europe. So Ukrainian politicians never say about membership in NATO. Never. And West Europe, you, you will not find any politician in West Europe government who said Ukrainian should be in NATO. Okay, Ukrainian should be in the European Union, European Union focus on economic growth, on poly stability, and NATO, let's be, and, and, and despite uh, uh, all these uh, um, efforts, um, the, uh, the Putin decided to invade because, as I said, Putin treat, uh, uh, you know, he didn't treat a uh, Ukrainian nation as a nation. It is a part of, of uh, Rafa. So, so it, is, uh, it is, I give some arguments, but it depends on you. But I, I would not analyze this. I would not analyze this in the context of uh, uh, um, uh, hegemon war between the United States and, 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 and uh, and uh, and uh, and um, uh, Russia, but I would analyze more that you know it is one crazy man had the, the uh, aspiration. He would like to have a big, uh, uh, big, uh, big, uh, big uh, Russia, and uh, and uh, he treat okay. It is our sphere influence. Let to use uh, let to use uh, uh, force. And in such situation, West West uh, European Union United States did not have. A choice because if we allow now, will not uh, the next it will be Moldavia, the next uh, will be Poland, the next will be Mexico. Because why you know the uh, the, the, the big powers would divide world. Do we want this? I don't want this. Okay, next question. Yes, yes. Okay, so it's a, it's a also a very good question. Thank you very much. And here it is an example of competition, different interests between, as uh, your colleague, you know, it's I'm fully aware that it is, you know, China, United States, European Union try to compete, try to be more active, uh, uh, more active in uh, in uh, in Africa, try to be more active uh, in a Latin in a Latin uh, in a Latin America. And of course, I'm aware that United States would be would like to be a leader in 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 the whole Americas, in both Americas. But and but and China is challenger. China is challenger. It is the same. It is, uh, but it is like in a free market. It uh, you needed to give some proposal, some concrete uh, proposal, and uh, and uh, the same it was uh, when I talk about Indo-Pacific. Uh, uh, and uh, 
uh, about Indo-Pacific and European Union and the, and the, and the US strategy in Indo-Pacific. It is not, you know, it, it is not a military strategy. European Union and the uh, uh, is not going to use military instruments to be more active in Indo-Pacific. Of course, in the context of United States, uh, uh, you know, they have military uh, bases in South Korea, in uh, Japan, uh, but United States understood one thing in the last five, six years, and it is connected with Latin America, with uh, South Asia, with Asia. It is common, common elements. Let's not talk about hegemony about superpower. I, I could criticize what you like, United States. It is, in my opinion, it is not good to show that it is some kind of conflict between authoritarian and democratic, uh, uh, democratic system. It is uh, United States uh, understood one thing thanks to China, that if we want to be to be a real leader, we need to give a concrete proposal in infrastructure. Uh, it must be it's a co common vision. Okay, we want to be, we want to have rule-based order, but we are also active in uh, infrastructure project. It must be some uh, some kind of uh, mm, uh, common uh, common uh, common uh, approach. So in this sense, in this uh, sense, for example, I will give you one example. United States w was very critical about China activity in, in South Asia. And India was also very critical. But if you go to, uh, to Maldives, very nice place, nice beaches. And uh, if you land at the airport to go to the downtown, few years ago, 10 years ago, you need to take small boat. Who built a bridge? China, and you have China, Malad uh, Malad uh, Maldives friendship, if you enter the bridge. People in Maldives, in Sri Lanka, in a lot of, in a lot of uh, African countries, don't care about who is power, superpower. They want to have concrete, concrete uh, solution. So, in my opinion, what was the mistake of Europe, but also what was the mistake of United States, we didn't offer concrete proposal. Okay, we could create this. Okay, you will be in uh, this project. We will uh, create this and this. Some, but, but fortunately, in, I could say it is more my personal view. But fortunately, uh, also a lot of people now in South Asia, in L Sri Lanka, understood one uh, thing: China did not this because they love us. They made us only for business, and now we have a big problem. So nothing, nothing is for free. So that's why, that's why in the context of, uh, I'm not expert on Latin America. I'm not, so my, my colleagues uh, and, uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, faculty is uh, focus uh, one of my colleagues on Latin America uh, politics. But I think uh, it was, uh, uh, if, if you talk about uh, European Union global uh, policy towards global, global south, we should be more constructive, more, uh, more, uh, more, uh, more, um, uh, more active and give a concrete uh, proposal. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, you were about, uh, how Germany could, so could you say again? So no, uh, why I talk about uh, German as a biggest loser? Because uh, uh, before war and also 10, 15 years ago, you know, German was a leader of uh, integration process in Europe. And the German really uh, put a stress and uh, the German wanted to develop common foreign policy, uh, common, uh, common defense policy. German w w was very interested in uh, this. If you, 
if you if you have a lecture about European Union history, you know European Union uh, where it was created, 93. It was a Treaty of Maastricht. In 93, European Union started uh, to uh, to work, and it was a discussion. It was a discussion uh, about uh, about. Uh, uh, common foreign and security policy, and which country was a biggest supporter of this common and foreign security policy? What do you think? Who wanted to start closer cooperation in foreign and security policy? So German were very interested. German were very German were very interested. Why? No, no, it, if you take again into account history, at the beginning of, uh, uh, of the 90s, German were united, yes? East and uh, West German were united, one state, German. German has a lot, had a lot of money. German was economic power. But because of the history, because of the Second World War, because of the Holocaust, in global politics, you know, if German would start to be very active in Africa, in Asia, oh, it would be not good. So let's create some European Union platform for closer, closer um, uh, cooperation in foreign and security uh, poli uh, uh, po uh, policy. And, uh, and uh, it is one, so German, was very interested to create this. And who was against cooperation in, in uh, foreign, and, uh, foreign and security policy at the beginning of the 90s? France. Why? Because we know. Why we should uh, create something like, you know, we have, we, we have very good tradition, foreign policy, let's be active in Asia, in India. But finally, finally, we have foreign and security policy cooperation in European Union. Why? Following, what's your name? Omar. Yeah. Omar. 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 For, Omar? Si. For following Omar, because it was different interest, business. France didn't want cooperation in foreign and security policy. Oh my God. Why we should cooperate under the umbrella of European Union in foreign and security policy? Foreign and security policy is something which is very belong to national interest. It is very national interest. But they accepted very loose, very weak level of cooperation. Why? Because France say, okay, we, will, we would accept this very loose cooperation in foreign and security policy. But France gave one condition. What was the condition? Let's create European Central Bank. And in future, let's create common money. We have Euro. Why? Why France was interested and push, push uh, countries, let's create, let's, Let's create European Central Bank and uh, let's create Euro. It was because of the love to United Europe. Oh, I, I feel European, so let's create common, uh, common uh, <laughs> money. Wh why? Why France pushed to do this? Because who was the biggest, uh, biggest economic power in Europe? Germany. So German with own money would be without any control. So let's in the integration group, if you have a group, so it was such kind of transa uh, transaction b uh, interest. And uh, coming back to your coming back uh, to your question, and you know, uh, German as a biggest uh, as a economic power, German was very active. And also in the foreign policy, in a very supported, let's create common foreign policy, let's create common defense policy. It's still interstate cooperation. And German was treated, you know, as a 
country which you know for them values minimum standards not use of force is very important why is the biggest loser because when putin started invading you know german had a business with moscow they didn't say okay suddenly we broke up we a lot of european countries also poland they need make made the prefer stop make business with uh, moscow why because if putin sold the gas uh, to to europe putin has the money and he could uh, send the army to to ukraine so that's that's why i think uh, okay i think that uh, german lost credibility to be a real leader in in the european union okay it will be very important player because they uh, in economic issues but as i said in in political sphere i think they because german you know uh, 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 chancellor faults he's not uh, you know without initiative let's do this let's do this let's make this so he's very he's very passive okay okay thank you very much i think you are going to explain to us something about the university of warsaw okay so thank you um it was a pleasure to us um, in the name of our university we have a diploma for you okay. oh thanks so much Picture, or yes. if I may, no, it's, <laughs> okay. can you make some picture, yes? And thank you very much for all the questions. Okay. <laughs> so I'm very demanding, also wanted a lot of pictures. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay, so, um, <laughs> do you have Alexa. Her, um, Alexa. Alexa, Dr. Alexa will explain to us about the cooperation about the University of Warsaw with foreign students. So if some one of you are interested in to go to Poland, please do not hesitate to ask to Dr. Um, no, no, doctor, just Alexander. Alexander, sorry. So I give you the place. <laughs> uh, okay, um, I'm uh, responsible at the Faculty um, of Political Science and uh, International Relations. Uh, I'm responsible for uh, international cooperation and, of course, also uh, some um, programs um, regarding students' exchange. And we would like to invite you um, to Poland to study, to visit, to, uh, to maybe learn about our culture also. And uh, I will tell you a few words about our university, about uh, faculty, what you can expect to, to come to Poland, uh, what you can uh, learn, and, um, and assure that um, beyond of the situation, in Europe and uh, in Ukraine, we are still a safe place. Yes, for us and for you also. Okay, next slide, please. <coughs> um, the University of Warsaw is uh, the second oldest uh, university in, in Poland. It's founded in 1960, as you can see, and um, is among of the top 3% of the world's best university uh, based on uh, Shanghai ranking. We have a uh, really, really uh, huge amount of uh, students. As you can see, almost uh, 30, uh, 38 students. We have a lot of doctoral students. We employ a lot of people. And of course, um, academic teachers. We have four uh, doctoral schools. Next slide, please. Uh, we, we have, of course, um, six people who, who, uh, who are prized, Nobel Prize. Yeah, 
yes, <laughs> that is here. Uh, we have 24 faculties and over 30 uh, research units. Um, and we held and uh, we are taking a part in many scientific pro projects financed uh, by uh, Polish and international grants, yes? Uh, next slide, please. Um, a few words about uh, about um, uh, what we can um, what we can uh, propose you. We have uh, bachelor and master's programs. Uh, we have a lot of uh, English language programs uh, and uh, postgraduate programs. Over over ten thousand students per year. It's it's really huge. Uh, huge university and uh, our faculty is really part of it but it's uh, one of the biggest part of uh, part of uh, university so if, if I may add uh, something Alexander mm -hmm. so uh, as you see we have uh, because of course we have the master bachelor program taught in Polish but we have a lot of uh, programs uh, master bachelor taught in English and what else we have also uh, a lot of uh, courses, uh, lectures taught uh, in English, even uh, especially designed for exchange students, Erasmus uh, students and exchange students from different countries, uh, and also from Mexico. We have uh, uh, we had uh, m um, uh, before pandemic, as uh, one of your colleagues told, uh, I think uh, uh, about forty students uh, from Puebla. But, uh, in the last. Uh, five, six years since 2014. We have a lot of, uh, we had a lot of students from Chile, Sinaloa, uh, a lot of places. And what is the important, yeah, yes, yes, uh, 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 here, but also in the, in the Warsaw also we, re we receive. But what is the most important, because some of you asked this question, is that we have, you know, at whole university, I think we have all together, uh, Next slide, please. Uh, okay, this is um, this is the building of our faculty. It's quite uh, quite modern from outside, but it's uh, it's really um, from outside. I don't know if it's modern or no, not modern. More, <laughs> more historical, but inside is modern. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, we have the biggest number of uh, foreign students uh, um, in Poland in our faculty. Um, we had every uh, every semester uh, more than two hundred students from abroad. Yes, it means we are real, real uh, we are good prepared for that. Uh, our of course. <laughs> Come, uh, 
Yeah, uh, our faculty is located uh, in the main uh, main campus, uh, which is in uh, Old Town. It's really good located. Uh, it means uh, we have really good um, public transport um, to to get there, and um, it's really nice area. Next slide, please. Uh, maybe professor could talk something. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so in, in, in this uh, context, uh, because it's uh, maybe it's not so interesting for students, but uh, you know, in our faculty of political science and international studies, the main uh, five research area is uh, the uh, political science IR, uh, and we have 200 faculty members. We have about 50 faculty members focused on IR, um, uh, and. Uh, um, about uh, 70, 80 focus on poli additional political uh, science and uh, social policy, about uh, 30 European studies, uh, 30 internal security, uh, 30 and this. I, of course, in this context, I'm very, you know, generally when I talk about European Union, the global order, I'm very liberal, rule-based order. In this case, I'm very real. No, IR could be very hegemonic. <laughs> Next slide, please. So, so it's also the, the structure of the department. So you could uh, you could uh, see what is the main research area, and in the context of uh, Latin America, most colleagues who focus on Latin America are in the Department of Regional and uh, and the Global uh, Global Studies. But you know, it it, it is especially. Uh, very important if uh, in future you would like to uh, to, to, to start a PhD program in a Warsaw University in the PhD School of Social Science and if you if you are chosen by committee we have a, a PhD program in political science and in future in next year we'll start PhD program in, in IR uh, so uh, so it will be very important for you because you could uh, choose uh, the, the professor who fits uh, the best uh, to your research interest. And if you are a PhD student, you don't need to pay and you receive a, a scholarship. It's about 700 uh, euros. And, uh, and the cost of a uh, dormitory is about 100 euros. So it is quite, so I encourage you, so of course, one of the best candidates to be your supervisor is Tony Edouard. <laughs> <laughs> Next slide, please. But uh, I'm, as you see, I'm not easy. I'm very different. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's, uh, so, so you must, uh, you will not sleep a day and a night when I would be your supervisor. You know, so, so you must. Next slide. Uh, if you like challenges, you could uh, try. You could uh, try. So it is our faculty scientific journal. Uh, uh, so it, it is especially for people uh, who are thinking. Can you move on? Uh, who are thinking uh, uh, to make PhD because uh, uh, it is a big competition in uh, to be next one to be, uh, to be at school of social science to start PhD program in political science or later in, in IR. If you are interested in this, so one more uh, one advice. Please start to think now because it's good Next, to please. have uh, also uh, publications. For example, maybe one joint publication with uh, one of your professors. Because you know the most important is research proposal, later interview, but also we look. It is Next, so please. Better. Yeah. <laughs> and it is. It was because on 12 on 12 uh, December, December we made Ukrainian Day at our faculty. And uh, during this uh, during this day, we signed 14 14 uh, 14 uh, uh, agreements with uh, faculties uh, of IR from whole Ukraine, and it was very um, very important day. But also, you know, not everybody could come, and if they could come, so it was older professor or a female professor because men. Could not, uh, could not uh, to come. We have also, we have also agreement. We started uh, cooperation with Mariupol University. 
faculty of Aya and Peter. But that university, the name is Mariupol University, but it's now based in uh, Kiev because Mariupol is co completely destroyed. So as you, as you know, and I don't want to make you know, it, uh, that's why you know, we put the take into account all this evidence uh, to listen all these people, you know, like in Mariupol. We, we are in touch with this professor from Mariupol and they, they lost uh, a lot of uh, family members. They lost everything and, you know, despite this, they tried to, to be active. So, 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 and it was 12, uh, 12 uh, December and uh, together with Victoria University of Wellington, we have a memorandum of understanding to give uh, one scholarship for one professor from Israel. And, uh, and uh, we are going to choose uh, the, 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 the best professor. Yeah, we host uh, students at our faculty based on uh, Erasmus agreements, and we have uh, those agreements um, a lot. Uh, but um, those what you could use, that's um, based on bilateral agreements, what we have uh, with your university already. Um, based on that agreement, you, you, can, uh, you can visit us. And um, we have uh, more than 60 uh, such agreements. It means uh, we have um, a lot of students um, um, from all over the world, yes? And next slide, please. Yeah, and a few pictures of our um, faculty. That's our main building, um, main aula, yeah, where you can have uh, some lectures. Uh, and this is the main gate to our uh, main uh, campus. Next, please. Uh, yeah, and so that's professor library. Uh, professor Kudetel, we have the most beautiful uh, library in, po in Europe. <laughs> well, in my country, it was not that beautiful. Yes, 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 but uh, when, when you were last time in Warsaw? About four years ago. Okay, mm -hmm. next slide. Yeah, next slide, please. So as you see, we have an uh, undergraduate program, uh, and the graduate program taught in English. And the, what is the most important is so we have, uh, uh, if you decide to, to go for uh, as an exchange student, you could uh, choose uh, uh, from uh, 50, 60 courses for exchange student, which course is the best for you. But if you would like to attend it for some one, two courses from this uh, program, if it's full page program, it is, it is also no problem. You could uh, uh, contact uh, Alexandra. Alexandra would be in touch with the head of this program and we allow students uh, from exchange programs also to attend this course, but, but of course you, you will not uh, have a diploma uh, from this, but you could uh, attend uh, the course. Next, please. Next, yeah, next. Yeah, yeah. And it's about, uh, so we have uh, the, the our undergraduate program, it is three years, and our master program it is a two years uh, program, and uh, we have also uh, we have also a double diploma with Pyongyang National University in Lusaka. And I think what will be interesting uh, for you, if you are come to us as an exchange student, now you would have uh, a lot of opportunities to take uh, part in seminars, conferences, uh, visiting professor lectures uh, from uh, from. Uh, uh, from Chicago, from the Haifa University, so, so, uh, because we have over 65 agreements. Next slide. Uh, it's uh, maybe next slide because yeah. it's more next, in the, next one. In the, in the, in the so, uh, to s so next slide, and uh, if, uh, if uh, I don't remember if we have more slides, but what yes. we could uh, say, uh, that uh, if you are, we have already agreement, we have already agreement uh, between our universities. So if you are interested uh, to go to us, uh, I think it, uh, till uh, till the end of uh, April you could uh, submit documents uh, um, uh, to our university via your your central office, your international. Yeah, but 
but our academic year, year looks a little bit different than yours, you yes. Holiday. Uh, yes, uh, Christmas, and then later, uh, the second semester is from the 20th February till mid, mid June. So we uh, we fully encourage you to come. And as uh, as I told, despite the central office uh, agreement, I encourage you to be in touch with uh, Alexandra, with uh, Professor Pedro Adriana, because I'm aware that you have a lot of questions. So. Uh, Yeah, and few words about uh, lectures, what you can expect, and I think so that some, would be some case uh, some uh, uh, exams of courses. So you could uh, look at this uh, courses. So uh, uh, maybe before, because it was at the beginning some courses. Thank you. So as you see, we have uh, courses uh, from uh, IR, from political science, but you know we don't put everything because. It is only from this semester for exchange students, so we have over 60 courses. So who will come to us? How many students now? How many? No, I don't see any graphics. <laughs> <laughs> they need now to we'll think about it, yes. Well, well, <laughs> Hola, buenas tardes. Este, bueno, yo les voy a comentar brevemente. Muchas gracias por estar aquí. Este, efectivamente, recientemente se firmó el convenio con la Universidad de Varsovia, específicamente con la Facultad de Ciencias Políticas. Y pues sí, les agradezco mucho que. Of course. Mm, last year for fall semester, we published uh, well, the calling, uh, I believe it was November. They had the full um, month of November to register in our platform. And yeah, uh, okay, we can discuss this later. Si, si tienen alguna duda, pueden acercarse a, a, pues a su director, a su secretario académico, o directamente con la Oficina de Relaciones Internacionales para poderles proporcionar toda la información que ustedes necesiten sobre los requisitos del primer filtro para ser seleccionados por la dirección y pues también eh, darles a lo mejor la asesoría sobre las asignaturas que, que ustedes planean cursar allá porque pues tienen que ser revalidables a su plan de estudios. ¿no? Eh, creo que la universidad es, tiene publicados sus planes de estudio o sus cursos de manera general, eh, en caso de que no los encuentren, pues nuevamente pueden acercarse a nosotros, nosotros contactar a la universidad y proporcionarles cualquier información que ustedes necesiten. No sé si tengan ahorita alguna duda o alguna pregunta. So, Cuba, I'm going to explain to them my experience in Poland. Uh, will be better in Spanish or English? 
ok. Bueno, chicos, pues eh, yo soy un ex egresado de la Universidad de Varsovia y me gustaría mucho recomendarles que eh, tuvieran la oportunidad de, de estar allá, de tomar en consideración este intercambio. Es un país muy interesante, ubicado geográficamente en una parte muy importante de Europa, porque está en Europa Central, lo que significa que ustedes tienen la oportunidad de poder viajar tanto a los países de Europa Occidental como España, Francia, Italia, eh, Holanda, eh, Reino Unido y por otro lado tienen… Eh, ¿perdón? ¿Corea? Ah, no, pero estoy hablando de la ubicación geográfica de Polonia. Y también tienen la uh, oportunidad de viajar a otros países de Europa del Este, como Lituania, Estonia, Croacia. Eh, y la experiencia de mía como mexicano en Polonia fue verdaderamente maravillosa. Me cambió mi vida, me cambió mi forma de pensar. Eh, tuve la oportunidad de conocer a muchísimas personas, tanto de Europa del Este como de Europa Occidental. Y... y Parece que estamos muy lejos geográficamente, en efecto sí lo estamos, pero en realidad, eh, <laughs> pero en realidad, I'm, I'm telling them the, how similar we are, Polish people and Mexican people, um, about our feelings, our values, our. We are <risa> y también este, pues eh, tienen muchas cosas muy similares con nosotros los mexicanos, les encantan las fiestas, les encantan los bailes, les encanta tomar. I'm speaking about how Polish people enjoy life. I mean, vodka parties. And so we are very very similar than Polish people. And tequila y, y realmente creo que eh, pues eh, invitarlos a ustedes a tomar en consideración esta oportunidad. En la experiencia de nuestra facultad hemos tenido aproximadamente 40 alumnos mexicanos de, la, de Relaciones Exteriores que han ido a Polonia y recientemente un alumno hizo su tesis sobre la integración de Polonia en la Unión Europea y actualmente algunos de sus investigadores de esta facultad estamos trabajando en un libro sobre Hungría y México y we expect to publish a book about Mexico and um, Poland and the Visegrad group of the European Union. Uh -huh. Publish. Four. Yes. As a faculty, but also we have a so-called Erasmus network, and the faculty Erasmus network of students, something like this, at the level of university, and the Erasmus students network organized a lot of uh, trips uh, for three days to Paris, uh, to Madrid, uh, to uh, Prague, and it is a very special price, very cheap, and uh, it is, you know, if you are in Warsaw, it is two hours to Paris, So, so a lot of, uh, you know, uh, it 
is also some advantage because uh, we are we, we are a hub in uh, in in the European Union. You know, we have a lot of uh, connections, and what is especially very interesting for young people, we have a lot of uh, this uh, fly, uh, cheaper uh, uh, airlines. So it is it is. Uh, I think you should also take uh, into account and about uh, and also because communication. We have all this information on our website, so Alexandra could send the, the could send the to the, to you, and the, the best person who will well, tell about party. Yeah. Well, okay. No, he's here. You know, he's he's very good. Okay, sorry, he's very good. Uh, uh, Oh, I was. <laughs> well, as a curious information, my nephew was in Austria, and then uh, he was on an exchange program, and then he visited Poland, Krakow, and my nephew told me, it is incredible, but I really f uh, felt that I was much better in Poland than in Austria, and it comes our ties as Slova Slovakians and Latins, I think we are very similar. Thank you. <laughs> it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's, uh, as, uh, as you said, yeah. we have similar approach to, uh, to uh, family, to, to everything. So Human ties. Yes, yes. So it's, uh, it's we are not talking uh, about uh, liberal or international <laughs> Ok, well, um, is that all? Um, un aplauso, por favor, para nuestros visitantes de Polonia. <laughs> Doctor Jakub, it was a pleasure to have uh, you and Ale Alexandra in our university, and it hope it will be um, the beginning of a huge cooperation between our universities. Yeah.